For this lesson, we'll be going over amplitude modulation, also known as AM. Let's go over the official definitions first. The process of impressing a low frequency intelligent information signal onto a higher frequency carrier signal. The other definition is information imposed on a carrier by causing its amplitude to vary in accordance with a modulating signal. So, so far you're probably completely confused and don't understand a word I just said. Well, let's go over to the next slide and we'll see if we can clear a few things up. Amplitude modulation means taking a audio signal, which is very low frequency, and combining it with a carrier signal, which is higher frequencies, usually between 540 kilohertz to 1700 kilohertz. And you're creating a transmittable signal. So if you look at our illustration below, we have a person speaking to a microphone, which is very low frequency. And then we're adding an oscillator to implement a higher frequency, again, between 540 kilohertz to 1700 kilohertz. And when combined properly, this will actually create a AM waveform, as shown to the right, which looks like the two combined. And by doing this, we can transmit it over the airwaves. So some of you are thinking, okay, why do we need to do this? Why can't we just go ahead and broadcast our our voices over the airwaves and just uh, receive them that way. Well, the problem is if everyone actually broadcasted their actual what's coming out of their voice or their actual speech and broadcasting it over the airwaves, it would come out the other end as cluster. Everyone would overlap over everyone else and would come out to be noise. Because the human voice operates around a frequency range between 300 and 3400 hertz. It's very low frequency. With these low frequencies, it would require a substantial amount of power to even output or broadcast over the airwaves, as well as you would need an extremely tall antenna or a very huge antenna. The idea to modulate an audio input signal with a carrier frequency is to provide a set AM frequency for that transmission. Okay, think of it like this. The carrier frequency is the home address on a long street, and we'll call this street AM way. Again, if you look at the bottom of the screen, I already have an illustration set up. Each house has a carrier frequency of, in the kilohertz range, starting with 540, going to 550, 560, all the way up to 1700 kilohertz. So each house has a carrier frequency that's incremented by 10 kilohertz, roughly. So if you want to send mail or an audio signal to a particular house, you have to make sure you use the proper carrier frequency to get to that home. The actual more relatable sense is if you had an older radio or a old car radio, I should say. If you look at the bottom of the screen, I actually provide an actual illustration of an older radio. So looking right at it, it starts at 530 kilohertz all the way up to 1700 kilohertz. And when you adjust that uh, tuner on your actual radio, you can see a needle start from 540, go all the way up to 1700. And that would that's how you adjust the stations. This is the same concept. The, what you're adjusting is the carrier frequency. You're going to a different carrier frequency. That way you can obtain the station or audio you are looking for. To reinforce this concept, a spectrum analyzer was used to illustrate how this information would look on a graph. So if you actually had a spectrum analyzer and monitored the amplitude modulation frequency range, you would get waveforms that would look similar to what you see here. Now for this illustration, there's only three waveforms shown just to keep it clean and simplistic. I only showed a 540 kilohertz, 1130, and a 1700 kilohertz. If you look at the graph, you can actually see the tip of the spike is right at those numbers on the dot. And those are the carrier frequencies that you're seeing at the very tip of these spikes. What we'll address later on is the actual uh, upper and lower sideband, but we'll discuss that further later on when we actually have examples to show with it. Just as a disclaimer, if for those who do not know what a spectrum analyzer is, it measures the magnitude and reference the frequency, as you can see here. Okay, so let's go over the overview of pros and cons of amplitude modulation. As we stated earlier, it requires a smaller antenna than if we just used our human speech or our very low frequencies over the airwaves. The general rule of thumb is the higher the frequency, the shorter the antenna. This is not an absolute, but it's a good general rule of thumb. It requires a lot less power, a substantial amount of power. 
again, if I sent over 300 or th uh, 3,000 hertz over the airwaves, it would require a substantial amount of uh, power than if I did higher frequencies, again, between 540 to 1,700 kilohertz. Shown in a previous slide, we showed a street with different carrier uh, frequencies showing as an address. That's a pro because we have designated frequencies per broadcast now. We don't have to jumble in between everyone's broadcast. You actually have designated frequencies. This is considered a con because it's very limited the amount of stations you can have on the amplitude modulation range. It's approximately 117 in one area. Now, when you actually broadcast in that particular uh, frequency range, not just amplitude modulation, but all frequency modulation and so on and so on, it's regulated by FCC. When it's regulated by FCC, you have to abide by certain rules, have certain licenses, and follow a strict amount of guidelines and regulations. So this is a little brief overview of amplitude modulation, just to get your feet wet. One last piece of important information for this video, I want to go over textbook terms. I noticed when looking in some of my communications books or PE references, they don't refer to the same terminology between book to book. For example, your input signal may also be called your information signal, your intelligence signal, your audio signal, and most importantly, your envelope. So be aware those all mean the same thing when going from book to book. Also, the subscript I notice is maybe different. It may refer to as frequency audio or frequency information or input, FI, FA. Now, the good news is your carrier signal, I notice it's called carrier signal between book to book. And as a subscript of FC, so frequency, your carrier frequency, very simple. Also, your AM waveform equation, which I have to the right, I just want to show it to you that way you can see the difference. I had two books that illustrated the same thing just in two different ways. They, instead of V, they used E. Uh, all the subscripts may be the same. Also, they used uh, 2 pi frequency instead of your typical form you're used to seeing. So be aware those two equations are the exact same thing. They're just saying it in two different ways. So when you're going from book to book and when you're writing your notes down, make sure you take notes in a way that's simple and consistent throughout you know, all of your notes. That way you're not getting confused with what the subscripts are. All right, we're going to end the video with this one. However, our next video is going to have more examples and more in depth of how to approach AM waveform uh, examples and problems.